वेलकम टॉपिक टू ऑफ वन वीक कोर्स ऑन डिजाइन ऑफ मशीन एलिमेंट्स नकल जॉइंट इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल डिस्कस द डिजाइन प्रोसीजर ऑफ नकल जॉइंट एंड अंडरस्टैंड द फेलियर मोड्स ऑफ नकल जॉइंट सो अ नकल जॉइंट is a pin joint used to fasten two circular rods in this joint one end of the rod is formed into an eye and the other into a fork so it's a double eye is formed for making the joint the eye end of the rod is aligned into the fork end of the other and then the pin is inserted through the holes and held in position by means of a collar and a taper pin once the joint is made the rods are free to swivel about the cylindrical pin so this is uh, the socket end this is one i end this is other i end this is the i end single i end of the other rod this is the knuckle pin so this uh, so these two are aligned and then this pin is inserted so this pin is held in its position by means of a collar and a taper pin so this is a collar and this is a taper pin these are the parts and these are the various dimensions of the knuckle joint this d is the this fork thickness is a this is a the thickness of the i end is b this is the rod this is the head of the knuckle pin so this is d1 diameter d o is the diameter of this uh, fork i d is the diameter of knuckle pin so let's understand what are its various failure modes so before uh, going to discuss the failure modes these are some of the applications of knuckle joint So knuckle joint is used in air brake arrangement of locomotives joints between the tie bars in a roof trusses joints between the links of a suspension bridge joints in valve mechanism of a reciprocating engine fulcrum for the levers joints between the links of a bicycle chain all these are the application of knuckle joint let us assume that the materials for the rods and pins is same and the yield stresses in tension compression shear are given by sigma t sigma c and tau or the permissible stresses in tension compression and shear are given by sigma t sigma c and tau this is the free body diagram of the forces which are acting on the knuckle joint fork pin and i so this following are the failure modes of the joint tension first is tension failure of the rod ki the rod is failed in tension that is the failure may take place here so the cross section area to resist this is pi by 4 d square so pi by 4 dr square into sigma p if dr is the diameter of the rod so this is the area multiplied by stress this will is equal to the applied force second failure mode is tension failure of i end okay, this is the i end and this is the tension failure so the area is this is the area which is resisting this force so this is uh, this dimension is d0 
the outer diameter of i the internal diameter is d the pin diameter knuckle pin diameter so d0 minus d is this distance and if this is multiplied with this we have this area so this if this is distance is b so b into d0 minus d into sigma t this is the resisting force so in the limiting case it is equal to the applied load tension failure of fork end so from this figure here it is failed here so fork end may also uh, got fail get fail in tear so this is uh, the area d0 minus d that is the different this is the case d0 minus d is this section it is multiplied by a a is this dimension since this is the if we cut it so we have the area so this is dimension is a this dimension is a so it is double area one this one area is at this side and other area is this side so it is twice a d0 minus d into sigma t is equal to p from this relation we will determine a if d0 and d are known to us next failure is shear failure of the pin so this is the shear failure of the pin pin fails in double shear one section is this other section is this so d is the diameter of the pin so pi by 4 d square is the area of the pin so it is multiplied by 2 uh, and it is multiplied by tau so this will become uh, resistive force uh, which is equal to the applied force in limiting case so from this relation we will determine d the diameter of knuckle pin Comp next failure mode is compression failure of pin in the fork end since the pin in the fork end is in contact with the fork so is the joint in work in a working condition so there may be chances that uh, the pin becomes loose inside the fork end so that may be due to the wear of the either pin or the socket uh, fork surface so the area is b into d and this is the area under compression in the fork end the area is this this dimension this is one of the dimension is this another dimension is the diameter so twice ad double area one area is this and other area is like this since it is having 2 in so 2 ad sigma c that is equal to p from this relation we will find out d from we know d from this relation then we can find out a from this relation then compression failure of the pin in the i end compression failure the pin is in com, com uh, the pin is having contact with the i portion so the chances are that there may be a compression failure takes place between the pin and the i end so the area under co compression is b into d that is multiplied by the sigma c this will give the resistive force that is equal to the applied load in the limiting case the next value is your shear failure of i end so this figure from this figure okay, if this section if this part is moves out then this is the shear failure so the area is d0 minus d this is d0 this is d so d0 minus d is this in which is multiplied by this so area is this here this is one area this is another area 
for the case of fork and for the case of in this will be b into g, g, d0 minus d into sigma into tau for fork the formula is twice a d0 minus d into tau is equal to p if we know a we know d0 we know d tau is uh, uh, this if we have these dimensions and we have this then we can uh, calculate the working shear stress from this relation and we can check this uh, shear stress another failure mode is bending failure of the pin so it is assumed that the load acting on the pin is uniformly distributed in the in but uniformly varying in two parts of the fork so for triangular distribution of load between the pin and the fork so if the pin bends then we have to calculate the bending stress of in the pin bending stress in the pin so this is the derivation we are not going into this we need the bending moment so bending moment in terms of the dimensions so this is the part of the pin which is in the double i that is the fork end this part of the pin is in the i end so this distance is b this is a so we have the bending moment mb is equal to p by 2 into bracket b by 4 plus a by 3 bending stress moment of inertia we can find out pi d to the power 4 by 64 y is d by 2 so we know the value of mb we know the value of y we know the value of y, i so we can write sigma b as p by 2 multiplied by b by 4 plus a by 3 into d by 2 upon pi d to the power 4 upon 64 when simplifying the formula finally we have this relation sigma b is equal to 16 p upon pi d cube into b by 4 plus a by 3 so from this relation we'll determine sigma b the bending stress and we'll check this with the permissible stress if this stress is less than the allowable permissible stress of the material of the knuckle parts then the joint is safe else failure so we have to again redesign it this is uh, the quiz problem for the topic 2 these are the source from which the material for the topic 1 and topic 2 are taken thank you